our first guest, his name speaks for itself. Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric the Entertainer has spent the last 30 years building his resume as a multi-hyphenate performer. He is no stranger to hosting award shows himself. In fact, he hosted the 2021 Emmys, the 2012 Soul Train Music Awards. He's known for his roles in the award-winning Barbershop series. Come on. People fell in love with his CBS sitcom, The Neighborhood. Cedric, yeah, this is great, right? So, I lost count at how many things he is great at. A singer, dancer, comedian, actor, producer, executive producer. I'm gonna run out of fingers. <laughs> and now, you can add author to his list. His very first novel, Flipping Box Cards. But here's the deal. It's a crime caper about a close-knit black family based in Missouri in the 40s, after the Great Depression and World War II. Now, this is legit. He, like, wrote a story. <laughs> he recently, though, posted, oh, my God, a heartwarming video of him unboxing flipping boxcars and holding it in his hands with all of his success, holding this first in his hands for the first time. Take a look. Uh, wow. That's it, guys. The new novel, Flipping Box Cars. Beautifully done. And look at you, boy. Please welcome six time NAACP Image Award winner, one of the original kings of comedy, the one, the only, Dr. C. That's good. Oh, congratulations! That's good. This is amazing. First of all, I, this book, I'm gonna dig into the book, but I love how much fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ma'am, this is a live show and it's not the Apollo. You don't just get to yell stuff out. <laughs> she heard about those lap dances. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Cedric is giving out lap dances after the interview. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> hey. That's what they're asking for. Hey, these plane tickets cost a lot these <laughs> days. <bro. laughs> Listen, you are having so much fun with this book and the tour. I love the said talks. That's oh, yeah. a great element in it because I, I feel like you are drawing people into the reality that you are a novel and you wrote so beautifully with this. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, that's the idea. I think, you know, people know me as a comedian, but I wanted to tell this story about my grandfather who I only heard stories about. I'd never met him. He, he had passed before I was even born. So, you know, like how we have in black families, somebody would be like, boy, you laugh just like your granddad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so from there, you know, I would hear these stories from my mother and my uncles. And so I started to imagine his whole life. And so I just fictionalized the tale. And uh, it just really was fun to do. And of course, drew me closer to him. I love this because in the book, Babe is a bootlegger. Yeah. He makes some decisions that jeopardize the family and the structure. And again, this is in the 1940s, Missouri. Yeah. I love the way I want to read an excerpt from the book that you wrote. A thick cloud of cigar and cigarette smoke formed a second ceiling, and Babe winced from the smell of whiskey and sweat. Despite prohibition laws, the liquor here flowed, streaming nonstop as if from an open spigot. Young women pouring beer and shots into tall, frosted glasses sashayed among the gamblers. The settling felt surreal. The setting felt surreal. Babe felt as if he had stumbled into a casino at the end of the world. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, I, yeah. I was reading it, and I, I could... Hey, I like that. Look at that. like, that boy said sashay. <laughs> sashay! Listen! Uh, boy, the word, the the words are so big, even I stumbled on them. I'm like, but I, I could visually yeah. feel it and see it. What was that like for you? Were you journaling? How did you get the words from the mind to the page? Yeah, that was... So the process was I actually started it thinking about a TV show. Oh. So I, I was, you know, when I would think of my grandfather, I kind of uh, visualized Devil in a Blue Dress. Yes. So those kind of, that kind of storytelling. Uh, the Great Walter Mosley. Great Walter uh, Mosley. Uh, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Like, ideas like that made me think about who he was as a person. So I would 
visualize it more like a TV show. Yeah. And so when I got an opportunity to write the novel, it, that's how it came out, it, very cinematic. So I would say things like with the description so you could see the room right. and get what he was feeling. And so it took a long time to kind of narrow it down to get it right because I'd be like, yo, yeah. and then the glasses clink. <laughs> But I, it's, I picked up on something. You said when I got the opportunity to write the novel, because I feel like your storyline has always been about you taking the opportunity. Yeah. So when you say when I got the opportunity, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I was offered to write a book, and usually comedians, they want you to write a book about, you know, the jokes. Yeah that you've told along the way, you know? And I was like, I don't really want to do that kind yeah. of book. So I explained to them the idea that I had. And so the 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 publisher was like, oh, okay, yeah, we like that too. Yeah. So that's why I say it was an opportunity because they when I, when I had the offer, it wasn't to write this kind of book. It was to write just a Yeah, the same know, thing jokes. happened to me. They yeah, wanted like, me to write like a beauty book. And I was yeah. like, I want to write a crime novel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and you're like, but, but you're Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah. So you do it all. That said, flipping boxcars is very different writing a novel. It's yes. a new world. You don't strike me because of your Midwest roots as a person who frightens easily. Right. Was it daunting? Yeah, um, of course. I mean, because, you know, one, you're going into the literary world. You're going into, uh, I, I like- Were you on like... Wikipedia a lot looking at words? Oh, come on, man, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We're playing, because like, you, you have a phrase that you want to say, you're like, I don't even know what I'm, I know what I'm thinking, uh -huh. but I don't know how to write this or say this, so I would go back. But my mother was a was a reading specialist, yeah. and we read a lot, so, and my sister is, uh, she teaches at Pepperdine, and she's like- uh, Your teacher, your sister teaches at Pepperdine? Yeah, yeah, so, so it's, that's in my, so when I so go So were you words, calling her a lot? Huh? Your oh, yeah, I call my sister all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she definitely want her cut out the book. That's I was gonna sure. say. You are hard kind of a, you talk about Babe a lot and your grandfather's influence, but you also say, I read an interview where you talked about your grandmom and that yeah. strong matriarch in her that was a guiding light for who you are today. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, I use Babe as the, you know, the kind of the, the, the hero of this book as the person that we're following, but really the book is a, an homage to my grandmother who, who, you know, just made sure our family stayed together. She was the one that you know, helped him build these businesses. She had the land and, you know, these ideas of like giving down um, legacy yeah. to your family and helping building a whole idea that was from her spirit. You know, he wanted these things, but she was actually the one that, you know, to do it, get it on paper, yeah. do the things. And so, uh, I wanted to honor that, but you know he was more, he was a character. He's a character, He's right? A character, yeah. you'd be like, "Yo, babe, voice was the whole thing, man."